Hello, and welcome to my tutorial series on how to make a 2D platformer in Unity. In this video, we're going to add a Cinemachine component to our game to have a little more smoother movement in our camera as it follows our player. Let's begin. So earlier in the series, we took our camera and then we added this camera controller to it that when we hit play over here, it would allow our camera to be able to follow our player, but it's kind of jerky because the entire camera kind of jerks back and forth when we move our player. And what we would like is just something a little smoother to maybe if the character moved, the camera didn't necessarily move with them all the time. So for that, we're going to use something that's built in Unity called Cinemachine. So we're gonna go up here to Window and we're gonna go to Package Manager. And up here are all the packages that are available for download in Unity right now. There are many of them, obviously. Uh, if we go here, I have Unity registered, uh, checked. In yours, you might have project and you might see a shorter list here. Go to this drop down menu right here and click Unity register. And you'll have this much bigger list of things that are available to you. The things that are marked in green here are the ones that are installed in Unity right here in my packages. But the one we're looking for is right here. It's Cinemachine. And it will tell you if you have the most updated one. It might say update here and you'll just click update and it'll update. But I have the most updated one, it seems. And I'm just going to hit install and it's going to install Cinemachine in Unity. And this might take a few moments. So once Cinemachine is loaded, you can just X out of that window. And then you should see a Cinemachine tab right here. Click on that and then go down to Create 2D Camera and it will automatically create your Cinemachine right here. And right now, as you can see, this, this symbol came up here on your camera and that's because it has automatically attached itself to your camera. Cine, excuse me. See, it's a Cinemachine brain right here. And so, what we want to do first is see camera controller script. We created that. We want to remove that component because we don't need it anymore. And then we're going to go right here to our Cinemachine. And you'll see this exclamation point because we haven't attached anything to it. Remember, we, we attached our player to our camera in the old script. If I hit game, it's not on anything. I think if I hit play, it's really not going to do anything either. No, because it's not attached to anything. So going back to our scene and going back to our Cinemachine, you'll see right here it says follow. It says none transform. We're just going to simply click, drag, and grab our player and populate it right there. And now we'll see that it has focused in on the player itself. And you should see these colorful boxes. We'll get to them in a second. But just to test it out, we'll hit play and just Make sure it's working as we want it to, which you pretty much operate at this point the same as our previous script, where it just kind of followed the player. So the Cinemachine can actually do a lot of things. We obviously won't get to all of them today, but we will go over some of these parts of the component. The first one right here is this lens, and right here you see the words orthographic size, and this is basically how our lens zooms in and out. You see here I have these little white arrows when I mouse over it. If I left click and move it to the left, it will zoom in. And if I scroll or move my mouse to the right, it will zoom out. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and change this to 10 just so we have a little bit of a wider frame here. We've been kind of zoomed in pretty far for a 2D platformer. It isn't usually very good to the player to be zoomed in so closely. So this is going to zoom my lens in and out. Now you'll notice, actually, right here we have this yellow dot. This is what the camera is focused in on. Now if I go down here, I'll have screen X and screen Y. This will move the camera itself to the left and to the right, in case you maybe just didn't want your whole camera to be centered in on your player. In some games you notice it's kind of offset. You can do this by moving these to the left and to the right. Some people like to lower or raise their camera view just a tad in some cases, uh, depending on their style or what they want from it. Right now, we're just going to return it back to its original center point, which is 0 
And also you'll notice that we have these two lighter blue or more noticeably blue lines that crisscross here in the center. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on blue background. I'm going to click it off just so we can see this a little better. And these are marking the boundaries of the what's called the dead zone. So what I'm going to go do, excuse me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to dead zone width and dead zone height. And you'll see if I move it, these lines separate it and create a little bit of a box. Let's, let's make this 0 0.3. And I'm going to go to the height and let's just make it 0 0.1. So if you notice when I did this, it created this darker box. And this is the dead zone. Actually, let me... Let me shrink this down just a bit for our use right now. And let me hit play. So the dark blue box is the dead zone. And basically, if I move my character, the camera won't, excuse me, the camera won't move until I get out of the dead zone. If I go all to the right and I go outside of it, then the camera will move with my player and this resolves kind of that jerking motion of the camera with a background and everything kind of jerked back and forth very fiercely or, or very quickly with the character as he moved with the dead zone it doesn't quite do that and even it does that in the y direction if i jump up now it won't move till i get out of the dead zone that way so that is one way to maybe smooth out your camera movements a little bit so we can also further smooth our camera movement with the X, Y, and Z damping. So if I increase this right here, let's just go ahead and let's just make this five. Might be a little too extreme, but this is for learning and examples. If I move ahead, then you can see that even when I get outside the dead zone, the camera moves pretty slowly. And if I were to move this back down to one, the camera moves a little more quickly when I get outside the dead zone. So you can play around with this and also in the Y direction to figure out to what degree you want your camera to move when moving ahead or behind. And I'll just show you also when I, let's say, make it five in the Y direction, it might move quickly in that direction. But when I jump, it hardly moves at all. This actually might work a little bit in a platformer like this where you might want to have a confined area going up and that it doesn't move very quickly because it doesn't need to as opposed to when he's moving side to side. So the next portion of the component that we're going to be talking about is the look ahead time and I'm going to drag this all the way to one. This is more than likely very extreme but once again this is just for observation and learning. So I'm, if I click on and I change directions, you can see how quickly this little yellow dot moved ahead. Basically, it's just looking ahead in the direction I'm going. And then it snaps right back. And like I said, this is pretty extreme. We probably don't want it to do it that far ahead. Maybe you do. It depends what kind of game you're making. But if you look ahead here, it, it jerks real fast. But I can also make an adjustment to this right here let's say i move this let's say to 10. the little yellow dot will look ahead but it'll do so maybe 10 was a little too much let's make five so it looks ahead but it does it the smoothing mechanism allows it to move just a little more slower depending on what your setting is and right here one of the things about do, um, excuse me, working with looking ahead is that it's going to do it in both directions. It's going to do it in the Y direction and the X direction. And a lot of the times you're probably not going to want very much look ahead in the Y direction. As you can see, it gets just jerks it very, very fiercely. So we have look ahead, ignore Y. So we can click on it and it simply will not operate in the Y direction, but it will in the X direction. And like I said, this being one is very extreme. You probably want it a little more downsized, maybe 0 0.3 I think works a little bit. It's, it's like everything else here. You just have to play around with the different components. I'm just going to lower this down to zero actually. 
excuse me, you just have to play with these components between the dead zone and the screen X and the damping and the look ahead to find the level of camera smoothness, excuse me, smoothness that you want. And lastly, you know, now that I've actually, let's put this back at one, just so we can sort of see how this last component, the soft zone width and height. And if I move this, back and forth, you'll see this, this blur box kind of close in. And this will actually, let me move it in pretty close so we can see how this works. So I have my look ahead time at one and I have my width here for my soft zone uh, high. And if you look, once it hits this blue box right here, it just snaps back a little quicker. As opposed to if I put the width out a little further, it won't do that right away and it jerk well because these settings are extreme now everything's going to jerk around a lot but so that's what this is right here when we're talking about the soft zone it is the the larger blue box here and how we want everything to interact with it so that's a little intro into the cinema machine obviously there's a lot of other things to go over in it we'll get to those in a later video but right now play around with these numbers or these components and find the camera movement you want for your game. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and support me on Patreon. And a special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. See you next time.